Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. It's rare that we have a day that is chock full of headlines and has a big, thick, juicy mane, but that is exactly the story of today. In our main episode, we will, of course, be talking about O3's cost reduction and O3 Pro being released. But when it comes to mainstream media covering AI, it is in fact a different story that is dominating headlines. That is, of course, the report that Meta is about to pay about $15 billion for 49% of data labeling startup scale. The company is taking non-voting shares, and obviously that 49% is very clearly designed to get around antitrust scrutiny, which is just a fact of life for all big tech companies now, despite the shift in administrations. One thing that has not really changed between the two is that big tech is very much in the antitrust hot seat. Importantly, though, this is not just an acquisition. And it's not even really that it would be Meta's biggest acquisition to date that's causing attention. The New York Times broke that this is also part of a larger shakeup in AI leadership at Meta. They wrote that Meta is preparing to unveil a new superintelligence lab with 28-year-old scale AI CEO Alexander Wang at the helm. Several other scale AI employees are expected to join Meta, and sources say that multiple seven- to nine-figure offers have been made to dozens of researchers from other leading AI labs. In other words, if this report is correct, Meta is rolling out compensation packages ranging up to hundreds of millions of dollars to poach top AI talent. The news, of course, comes in the context of multiple changes to AI leadership at Meta. After reportedly being panicked by the release of DeepSeek and failing to impress with their own Llama 4 model, some have seen Meta as being in a bit of a crisis. Bloomberg reports that Mark Zuckerberg himself is personally overseeing this new team, writing, Zuckerberg has prioritized recruiting for the secretive new team, referred to internally as a superintelligence group. He has an audacious goal in mind. In his view, Meta can and should outstrip other tech companies in achieving AGI. Bloomberg sources say that the team is being hired up to around 50 people, including presumably Wang at the head of it. Now, what we don't have is information about current leadership at Facebook like Jan LeCun, but Zuckerberg's focus definitely appears to be this team. Those same Bloomberg sources say that Zuckerberg has rearranged desks so the new staff will sit nearer to him. Now, interestingly, a lot of folks privately asked me what I thought the deal was here. While Scale AI's business is very successful and seems to be growing, they reportedly had $870 million in revenue last year and are on track for $2 billion this year. That's very clearly not the reason for Zuck to make this acquisition. It also doesn't seem like the natural place to go hunting for research talent, as that's not really what Scale does. The narrative that people have settled on quite quickly is about competition around data. Scale AI is somewhat unique as the largest startup providing data labeling services at scale. They have over 100,000 global contractors working on labeling images, video, and text. Now, at the beginning, that was mostly about pre-training, but increasingly it's about higher order reinforcement learning from human feedback, which continues to be a key part of not only model advancement, but also things like compliance in new regimes like the EU's AI Act. Many other people have the same thought that maybe this is Zuckerberg's way of cutting off competition from data. And who knows, that may be part of it. It does feel to me from the outside, though, that if that is a part of it, it is only one part of it. For whatever reason, it feels to me like Zuck is fairly convinced that Alexander Wang is the new force and the new energy that he needs to bring in from a leadership position for AI inside of Meta to right the ship. The price that we're seeing may simply be the cost that it took to get him there, with Zuckerberg being able to justify all the rest, based on, yes, their business model, of course, but also the privileged position it puts them in vis-a-vis others who need their services. I would say, overall, the tone and tenor of the response is skeptical. Signal writes, So let me get this straight. Meta's AI strategy is just brute forcing with cash again? What's the vision? Just spending their way into the super intelligence race? Feels a lot like the metaverse play. Overfunded, underthought, and wildly disconnected from how people perceive these experiences. Am I missing something? Flooding the zone with capital just breeds distorted incentives and likely shallow execution. Indeed, on that incentive line, some people pointed out that the payday for Alexander Wang on this is going to be something like $4.2 billion. And so is he actually going to show up at Meta with fire in his belly, or is he going to be just wanting to go off and gallivant and party? For that, we will have to wait and see. But that was far from the only news over the last day or so. One story that is getting some traction is that it appears that Elon Musk's feud with Donald Trump is weighing on his AI fundraising. Last week, it was reported that XAI was looking to raise $5 billion in debt funding. The Wall Street Journal reports that Morgan Stanley had gathered XAI executives on Thursday afternoon to pitch the debt to investors. That is the same Thursday afternoon that Musk himself was teeing off against the administration. The Journal even reported that investors were following Elon's tweets on their phones while the presentation was underway. 
Now, so far, this doesn't really seem to have affected things. The journal writes, so far, buyers who showed initial interest haven't backed off. Indeed, demand for both the debt and equity sale has actually increased since Thursday, said one advisor to the company. Now, it feels like a pretty big grain of salt, as that's obviously the narrative that you would want. But maybe it's all an overblown story, given that Elon is officially starting to walk back his position, tweeting this morning, I regret some of my posts about President Donald Trump last week. They went too far. For a very long time, Elon has had a basically blank check when it comes to his companies. And so it will be very interesting indeed to see if that is starting to run out. Or, as it seems might be the case, this ends up being just a very temporary bump. One company that is not having any trouble getting interest for fundraising is Lovable. The company is apparently in talks to raise $100 million at a $1.5 billion valuation, which honestly I could argue is kind of cheap. At the end of May, CEO Anton Asika shared that the company had crossed 60 million ARR and that growth was up 50% week over week. This is a company that still only has like 28 employees. And obviously, if you listen to this show regularly, you know how central I think vibe coding will be to our future. And so it makes total sense to me that there's this big interest. And for those wondering why they would raise this money, given how much money they're making, the short answer is that this is going to be one of the most hotly contested spaces in all of AI, and it's just going to take resources to compete. If the story gets confirmed, I will, of course, share it here. But for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.